great is our God. How great is our God. We thank him for his presence right now. I know he's here because he said where two or three are gathered in my name. Hey, hey, there am I in the midst of them. And, Father, we acknowledge your presence right now. You're the strong God in the midst of your people. Oh, my. And we thank you for your mighty presence right now. This morning our subject is stand, S-T-A-N-D, for one another. On yesterday, on Sunday, our pastor presented a message, and it was called Getting Past Losses. That was the name of his message on last Sunday. And it was a great message. God plan for our lives has been set. He said it in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know my thoughts that I think towards thee, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And ladies and gentlemen, God has not changed his mind about your future. One thing about us, we can change, winds may blow, but God, but God, is one he said he he is God is one way he changed not understanding that life is precious is our responsibility what we do or don't do is not just limited to affecting us as individuals it can affect individuals around us our family our children our grandchildren in John the 11th chapter in the 43rd verse and the 41st verse this is a story of Lazarus he had died he had been dead for four days and Jesus came in the midst you know the story he came in the midst and he spoke he cried with a loud voice Lazarus come forth and he that was bound came forth bound hand and foot and grave clothes and his face was bound with a napkin and Jesus said unto them loose him and let him go that tells me that it's not over until it's over that tells me that we need to be encouraged concerning the destiny and the dream that God has placed in us don't think just because you have transitioned into an older age that God has changed his mind about your plans for your life no 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 God has not changed his mind. He is a faithful God. And he will, uh, Ron Canole used to sing, he'll do what he said he would do. God is able. He's more than able. He's faithful to do what he promised in our lives. First John 3 and 8, it says, For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. God specializes in the business of freedom. He wants his people to be free. We are to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And pastor's message in getting past losses on last Sunday, one thing that stood out real big, whatever situation you're in, Jesus is greater. Jesus is greater than any situation that we are confronted with. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you that the battle is not in what has already been given, but it's in us and what we say concerning things and matters that confront us. I'm talking about speaking to your mountain. I'm talking about declaring as God has declared. Over in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it says in the third verse, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. In other words, when God spoke the world into existence, he said, let there be. And we are his children. We have to operate like our father. We got to speak to our circumstances. The reason we got strength for the day is because we got ministers that inspire one another. I know what my connection is. It's to bring inspiration and to inspire you to walk beyond where you've been walking and walk into the supernatural because that is the natural for us to live in the supernatural. What I'm saying to you today, if there are situations in your life, sickness, in your body, in your children, 
you make the declaration. You look in that mirror sometime and say, by his stripes I am healed. You just know that you are to resist the devil. The Bible says resist him and he will flee from ye. But ladies and gentlemen, what we've been missing it is not in the believing, but it's in the saying. Let the words come out of your mouth concerning things and destiny in your life, things that you want corrected. Speak God's word over those situations. We need to call those things that be not as though they were because God's truth is greater. God is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. He spoke the world into existence. We have to use our mouth, our tongue to speak and declare our destiny. If we need healing in our bodies, we need to say that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. It doesn't matter how you're feeling in your body. You just confess it. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. But I'm telling you, that seed is being planted when it comes out of your mouth. And let me tell you something, it'll grow because that is the nature of that seed. It will produce of its kind. You declare it. You say it out of your mouth. You are speaking from the abundance of your heart. And that's what we need to do like never before. We need to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And don't think that you have liberty to just say anything. Watch your words. Watch over your words because your words have power. So we just thank the Lord this morning for him to say, to a man that has been dead for four days, tell him to loose him and let him go. What we need to receive out of this passage of Scripture is that God, God, what you think is over, God, you speak life and not death. It's a situation, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just testify just briefly, Kate and I, my uh, sister and I went to a hospital near Gilroy, California. It's about uh, 30 minutes south of San Jose. This individual, they had called in uh, the family and just put her in a separate room in just a matter of time that she would perish. But Kate and I went to that hospital and declared that she shall live and not die. And ladies and gentlemen, that's been about, oh, I would say 16 years ago. The girl is still living. There was another individual that had been in a situation on the street. Somebody had beat up this individual, and they had put him in a room to die. Ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 I uh, was in that room with him, and I said, you shall live and not die. And sure enough, that's been about 12, 13 years ago, and that individual is still living. I'm telling you, it's power in your words. There was another individual, a young man. I went to the hospital, and all of his friends was in that hospital room. Uh, they were in a waiting area. And I told them, I said, let's hold hands and let's get an agreement that this young man, I forget his name now, shall live and not die. Everybody got an agreement. They had called in the family to just give him his last rites. But, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord healed that boy, raised him up, raised him up. And I'm telling you that God's power, his miracle work in power, we need to just declare it. We need to be about his business because God is a miracle worker. And that's why we come to strength for the day to be encouraged. And I hope you are. I hope you have been encouraged today. The best is yet to come. Father, we thank you for everything that's been said and done. We receive, we receive, we receive, and we declare that we will never be the same because we have been faithful in attending strength for the day. Iron is sharpening iron. We are receiving. We are walking in the miraculous environment of where you would have us to walk. We determine to be here constantly and faithfully. In Jesus' name, amen.